Good afternoon. And thank you, Aretha, for joining me this afternoon. As many of you know, um, April is Second Chance Month and is observed in the United States during April since 2017. It is a nationwide effort to raise awareness of the collateral consequences of a criminal conviction and unlock second chance opportunities for people who have paid their debt to society to becoming contributing citizens. And certainly we do have one of the best citizens that I know, uh, uh, one of our sisters in Christ, Miss Aretha McDowney. Aretha, welcome and thank you for joining me today to uh, do this interview. I, I believe that, um, and I said this to you before uh, April even ca came in, I just believe that you have such an awesome testimony. <clears throat> and I believe that a lot of people will benefit from hearing your story. And um, so I just want you to talk a little bit about, um, tell us a little bit about your incarceration, because as I said to you before, I believe that's where your, actually your story starts. And just give us a brief uh, synopsis of things that have happened with you. And just tell us your story. Okay. Um, my name is Aretha McDowney, and as far as my incarceration went, I got incarcerated on um, April of 2015. It was such a horrible story. Um, they kicked my door in and all of that, but during my time of incarceration, I learned a lot. I kept a lot of stuff bottled up on the inside. I was frustrated. I was blaming everybody else but myself for my incarceration. Um, once I realized that, hey, it wasn't the world that did it to me, I did it to myself, wow. then my whole mindset began to change. I began to come out of this whole eggshell, so I kind of like cracked the shell, and I realized that, hey, I did this to myself, so now it's time for me to just deal with it, live with it, go through the struggle process, and my struggle made me a better and a stronger person. Appreciate as far it, yeah. as, um, you know, while being incarcerated, I did a lot of reading the Bible towards the end of my incarceration, not the beginning of my incarceration, mm -hmm. because like I said, I was blaming everybody else except for myself. But once I realized, then, you know, my whole mindset really changed to the fact that I had to, you know, deal with, you know, God wanted to get my attention and right. he really right. got my attention because mm -hmm. sitting behind a four by six wall or whatever the size wall it was, wasn't able to come out and go and, you know, to go from here to there, point A to B and barely hardly going to Bible studies and stuff like that. It kind of make you just sit and wonder like, you know, why mm -hmm. do I have to go through this? But God wanted my attention. So he got my attention and that's when I started reading the Bible. I started doing some Bible studies within myself, mm -hmm. um, started writing letters. And then I had to have this mindset of, you know, where I wanted to go in life, what mm -hmm. kind of goals that I want to set. Let me ask you, do, I believe Felsid came in at one time, and I think you did attend some of the Bible studies. Did you not? Yes, towards mm -hmm. okay. the end. Um, okay. I was only there for 10 months at Rappahannock Regional Jail, but prior yeah. to that, I was in prison. I did, um, I went through three prisons, mm -hmm. and during that process of going through three prisons, I barely had a lot of church organizations and stuff going on so like I said I did a lot of reading and stuff you know dealing with myself more than just going to churches and stuff because we were locked down a lot you mm -hmm. know even in prisons and stuff so once I got to Rappahannock I thought it was going to be a little bit different but it was different I was incarcerated and locked down even more but mm -hmm. I did make it to the Bible studies I went to some classes that didn't even you know, I felt that I didn't have to be involved in, but with my testimony and the things that I had experienced in life, I felt that even going to AA and NA and stuff was um, something that I could help somebody else with. You also met, if I'm not mistaken, Chaplain Jill and Chaplain Jack while you were at yes. Rappahannock, did you not? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I did. I know I they influenced know. you a lot. Yeah. yeah, I used to mm -hmm. always put in requests for him to speak to Chaplain Jill, you know, Good. times mm -hmm. I was going through stuff and, you know, just to have somebody that I know that would reach to, you know, reach out to me as far as coming from the outside, you know, that made a big change in my life because you can listen to a lot of inmates, but we call that jailhouse talk. Mm 
you know, okay. and, mm -hmm. and that's what I didn't want to deal with. I really didn't want to, I didn't want the jailhouse talk. I wanted mm -hmm. someone from the outside. So yeah. I really had a lot of encouraging people that beca began to be my backbone, okay. you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now let's transition to, so you, you were returning home mm -hmm. uh, and you had to make some, some really big decisions as to uh, taking advantage of the opportunities presented to you, uh, associating yourself with a certain group of people. And I know that you did with uh, Christian Sisters Transition Program. Yes. Um, and then taking advantage of that community to go ahead and say, I want something different for myself. Because if I'm not mistaken, I think I heard you say that you had, you had been in prison more than once. Yes. Actually, I had done prison time three times. That was my third time. So your third time in Rappahannock, and as you said, yes, it suddenly dawned on you. You had an awareness. I yes, have to take. Because, um, I read a book while being at um, Goochland Prison okay. um, about your third time is your last time. Wow. And I pretty much let that stuck with me. Um, I said, you know, I can't do this anymore. Three strikes, you're out is mm. the way it goes with the ball game. My thing was um, I had to change my people, places, and things. Good. I couldn't go back to the same neighborhood because that's that was where it was the drugs was there. And I felt that if I went back there, then I wasn't going to get a job because everybody knew me in that area. And okay. that was my reason for changing my places and to not deal with the same people that I have dealt with. Because the first time I did time, I went right back to the same neighborhood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The second time I did time, I got out and went back to the same neighborhood. So mm -hmm. this third time, I was like, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to start good. over and, you know, make a change in my life this time. And that's exactly what I did. And it was the best time. You know, mm -hmm, it's, mm -hmm. it's changed my life. I've had, I've, you know, bought a house. I have cars. I have a great job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, to experience things when they, it's a true saying, we have to change our people, places, and things in order to gain some knowledge and to gain things that we never had in life. But you did, you did, you did that, but I believe you did more. Go, let's go back to the people thing where you actually, um, uh, put yourself in the midst, and this is from my eyes looking in, mm -hmm. in the midst of a group of encouragers that poured just good feed into, uh, food yeah. into you. They just poured into you, Aretha. And I saw, I, I saw you start to blossom to the point where you became a praise and worship leader, a, a praise dancer. Now, I don't know if yeah. you were doing that before, but no, I around and speaking at churches <laughs> and praising it. So tell us a little bit about how you, that opportunity, how that came about. That opportunity came when I said that um, I wanted to do something to make a difference in the society. I want to mark my area for the world. Mm. And that was to put my name out there, to put it out there that I could do something other than, you know, drugs and, you know, other stuff that I was involved in. So I said once that I got out, I joined um, church. Church was my first thing. I went back to my old church. But I say, well, I got to make something else out of my name. I want my name to be different. And people are always waiting for you to enter back into society and say, oh, she's not going to be who she thinks she is, da, 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 da. So I'm mm -hmm. making a big difference in the world. As far as praise dancing, I went to the fact of even having my own cards made. Mm -hmm. to go from churches to churches to praise dance. And I think I've done about six or seven churches that I actually, and I'm doing it solo because to have someone to, you have to call and say, hey, can you come on? Can we practice tonight? So I did a lot of practicing in my house um, mm -hmm. myself. And that was one thing that really made a change because I use songs of worship that yes. told about my history, you know, my past and things that I had been through. So that was like a big deal for me, you know, and to So now it sounds like it's easy. Right. You know, when we're sitting here listening to you, oh, Rita just walked out and she had some great people talking with her and encouraging no. her and it was easy. But I know there were some tough struggles. I, I need for people yeah. to to listen to this interview and say, tell me something that a takeaway from this interview that you would say to a brother or sister that is returning to society 
that if mm -hmm. you, you're saying, you know what, take advantage of the opportunities because it is a hard struggle. What, what is the one thing that you think that you can give to us that talked about that struggle, that painful struggle? Because I know it was painful, a painful struggle, mm -hmm. how you had the courage to keep going. My painful struggle is that my most of my family turned their backs on me once I got incarcerated. And I say, this is going to be a really, really struggle for me. You know, I didn't have a lot of people on the outside while I was incarcerated. And I lost a lot of family members while being incarcerated, and such as my son, my mom, my dad. Oh, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I lost a lot I of remember. people. And that was one thing that really made me turn my life around too as well on the inside before I entered the outside. But once I entered the outside, it was a struggle because I didn't think I could find a job with the background that I had. I didn't think I would have someone to actually go. And you know, a lot of us, when we get out, we don't know where we're going, but thank God I had a backbone as far as my boyfriend, he was there. But when you treat people right, um, even during your hard times of drugs, alcohol, or whatever it is, even through that hard time, when you treat people right, you, you find out that it's not hard as you want it to be, as hard as it should be. I went through the struggle of, you know, going back to church, and once I entered into the church, people looked at me from the way I used to be, and they was like, oh, here she comes back. And that's not the way that I thought that it should have been um, to enter back into your home church where you actually was born and raised. Mm -hmm. So that kind of like that type of a struggle is, I would just say that, you know, to start all over again, um, dig, dig deep down from the inside and say, hey, I know I have changed my life and I have to really prove to the world and prove to myself that this struggle is real. You know, okay. the struggle is real. So now I understand that you do have a church home. Oh, yes. Um, and that you're enjoying, uh, I know that you're in the praise and worship of the choir. Yes. And I've that you're just doing wo doing wonderful things in your church community. Yes. So, so we're happy with that. And your faith, um, from what I hear you uh, encouraging others on live feed on, on, on Facebook, your faith mm -hmm. uh, to me is very strong. Yes. Tell me a little bit, just very briefly, about how your faith uh, helped you during this time frame. What was it about your personal relationship with Jesus Christ that that made you um, come to this conclusion that, you know what, this is it. My life is no longer going to be this. It's going to be in a completely different direction. My life began to change, like I said, on the inside. Mm -hmm. And then once I got home and, um, you know, joined church, I actually got baptized all over again. Um, mm -hmm. I recommitted my life to church, to Christ. And I said that, you know, not, not ever again would I turn my back on God. God has kept me to the fact of being a real person and, you know, reaching out to others that I know that are really into church and the going into Christian sisters and Christian brothers um, program really, really helped me and fail safe as well. Mm -hmm. But every Saturday morning to get up and go to Christian brothers, something that was so encouraging and you could go to somewhere that people didn't look at you a certain right. way. Mm -hmm. really, really helped me. And it inspired me to be the person that I am today, you exactly. know, and yeah. I don't feel like people look down on me because I have been a big encourager. I have been one that wrote to, I constantly write now to inmates to give back, you know, from society, from the outside and let them know that I've been where they are mm -hmm. and the things that they have to do starting on the inside and working their way on the outside. So my religion and my faith has gotten very, very, very strong because I keep myself, you know, bottled up and to the fact of praising God, giving God the glory, giving mm -hmm. God the thanks and the praises for all that he's done for me. I don't take anything for granted. I actually, you know, I, I try to tell people, yeah, my struggle has been a struggle, you know, but it has made me a better person. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. That's, that's Amen. I, I love that. Just really briefly, I heard you mention fail safe, and we know that you are now our, um, uh, you took a part of, um, uh, in one of our classes, a Toastmasters class. Yes. And now you are the head honcho for our te uh, Toastmasters okay. class. Can you tell a little bit about uh, your selection to go in and do that? And Ms. Juanita Shanks, our um, CEO of Felsafe, um, uh, I don't know what she had to say to you about it, but apparently she saw something within Aretha that said, <laughs> I want you to head up this. So talk a little bit about that for us. As far as Toastmasters, when Miss Juanita Shanks called me and she said, Aretha, can we meet? Because I think that you would be a very good candidate for Toastmasters, to be able to run Toastmasters. When I say I got out in 2017, I participated in Toastmasters. And I was one of the people that really showed enthusiasm with Toastmasters and she called me and I went over there and we had a conversation and she's like, I feel that you are the type of person that we need as a returning citizen to be able to do Toastmasters. Toastmasters was a wonderful class to be able to speak and not to say, um, ah, uh, and all those things. It is amazing because you sit back and you listen to other people talk and you hear them say, um, ah, uh, and all those words. It is such an amazing thing. But when she told me that she would like for me to be the head honcho for Toastmasters, I felt a part of me saying, yes, why not? Because I have gained so much being out of here and out here in society in the last two years, you know, it, it just makes me feel like, okay, well, someone else is seeing something else that I may not see, but she saw a part in me that is going to teach someone else that, you know, being incarcerated is not, you know, something that's going to hold you back. It's something that's going to make you grow. And she saw that part in me that um, she knew that I could be a very good candidate for that situation. And I'm like, I'm so happy to be a Toastmasters leader. Yes, yes. Uh, I made a couple of speeches and things there. So I think that really touched her heart as well as others that was in Toastmasters and fail safe, which is something that we really look forward to um, not putting on a show and just speaking from the heart is where it's all, you know, it's going to be. And that's my thing. I don't, I don't put myself up on a pedestal. I just speak from the heart and I realize that, Hey, it's the work of God and it's what's keeping me strong. And she really, you know, she said, Aretha, you, your testimonies, I could sit here and tell you stories after stories after stories. But, um, just from my past testimonies is something that's going to make my future a lot better. Amen. Amen. I just want to commend you again, Aretha, um, your live feeds on Facebook, your going out to the various churches and not only praise dancing, but I know that you're speaking out there yeah. and you're encouraging uh, work that you do where you sent in your letters to um, the, the women uh, that are incarcerated, I think at yes. uh, RRJ, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just want to commend you for that, that you did not get out and uh, leave others behind. I think that's uh, yes. uh, one of the great things about a great leader is that you take the time to encourage others, mentor others, and bring them along with you. Yes. Um, when you have stepped up to another level, then someone else can step in and take your place where you are. We're all, that's what a leader does. They're yes. uh, uh, preparing others to come forth and take charge and lead because they have a group of people that are going, that they're going to have to uh, uh, bring up to be leaders also. Yes. So I commend you again. And thank you for um, uh, sharing your story with us. I know that it will be an encouragement to others. Thank you. Uh, when are you going to start your Toastmaster classes with Velsa? Hopefully, as soon as all this coronavirus stuff is over with, um, we're going to try to maybe even work a couple of classes. Right now, I'm still doing classes online um, with Toastmasters. We do Zoom online as well, you know, so I'm going through the stages of class right now. And it's going to prolong because of the coronavirus. But as soon as this stuff all ends, it was supposed to start the end of this month. And... We're just hoping and praying that it will all be over real soon and I'll be able to go forward with my Toastmasters. 
Amen. Amen. Again, I just want to say to our audience, thank you. We look forward to um, having another interview. We have some other uh, great speakers lined up. Again, thank you, Miss Aretha. You're and welcome. I say continuously, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you.